The Second World War was the most destructive war ever. But after a long fight, all the Allies had lost it. Even the American resistance was halted in the wake of nuclear fire. We won all because of our Führer's great guidance. We now own land all over Europe. So, fittingly, the Führer launched our space program. After a lot of money and time spent on it, we finally landed the first man on the moon. The Reich has reached space. Then, out of nowhere, a Japanese spy striked at the Führer. Luckily he survived. A week later, he held a speech that his successor would be Göring, the militarist. So, it's time to solidify control for him. We started with sending the military to crack down on students that were protesting. Then Göring held a speech before the Reichstag to increase legitimacy. Then we began securing the loyalty of the military for our side by giving the Luftwaffe more money and bribing some Waffen-SS commanders. Then worrying news arrived from Burgundy. It seems that they have tested their first nuke. And Hitler's health is getting worse and worse. We need to raise our influence before Hitler inevitably dies. So, we started training the Wehrmacht to show that the military is ready to support Göring if any armed conflict would escalate. And then we launched a giant parade in Germania. But as the parade was over, news arrived that Hitler is in a coma. So, it's time to make our moves. We restricted the SS and cracked down even more on the liberal students. And to finally get rid of all resistance to Göring's rule, we will invoke Hitler's name. Our enemies have to remember that Hitler wanted Göring as a successor, not anyone else. This only led to a slight boost of legitimacy. Then, the 16th October 1963, Hitler died. At the funeral, Bormann, Speer, Göring and Heinrich all showed up. After that, everyone left to put their plans into action. Göring began moving the whole Luftwaffe north to be ready if anything would happen, while Bormann has been moving divisions from the army to Bavaria. Meanwhile, in the Reichstag, everything was chaos. Then it happened. Heinrich declared himself the real Führer. Spearman and Bormann followed suit. And some days later it escalated into a German civil war. Bormann in Austria and Bavaria. Heinrich in Elsass-Lotharingen and East Prussia. Speer in Northwest Germany. And us in Central Northern Germany. Luckily the military managed to keep Germania out of the war. Our plan to win this war is to first capture East Prussia and then we can push southwards to Austria. But first of all, we captured Hamburg. Then we turned to the east. Heinrich had not a lot of division, so we encircled them and continued to Danzig and Königsberg. Once we had destroyed all of his divisions in the east, we noticed that Speer had naval invaded Hamburg and Königsberg. So we had to capture Hamburg again. At first, our offensives were total disasters and they even managed to encircle our whole army in East Hanover. We did send reinforcements to fight them in Rostock. At first, this didn't seem to help, but then we managed to encircle Hamburg and their whole invasion fell to the ground. With Hamburg, Kiel and Rostock liberated, we turned our head once again to the east. We captured Königsberg and Memmel and then their whole army was encircled. While we fought in East Prussia, Bormann began attacking us. So we sent our Prussian forces there to stop them. We managed to encircle Breslau but they unencircled the city later. We continued fighting and the front went back and forth. Crushing Bormann from this front will be near impossible. So instead we will help him finish off Speer to open a new front. The Spearians were not ready for our attack and we quickly captured their whole coastline. Then we continued south and captured their industrial hub around the Rhine. Once we captured it they surrendered. Now there are only two fake Führers left to defeat. So we began pushing against Bormann to weaken him. 
We tried an encirclement, but they narrowly managed to escape with their tank division. So, we launched a second attempt at encircling their army, and this time we were successful. With their divisions crushed, we now have a stronger army than Burman. So, it's time for the biggest attack yet. We will encircle their whole front in the east by cutting them off against Bohemia. We pushed through and advanced towards Leipzig, then we turned more south and after getting stopped sometimes we managed to encircle them. Now they had no more supply and we attacked with our army in the east. We managed to quickly crush them. With that massive encirclement we only have to drive south and take over München and Wien to win against Bormann. So, we assembled the biggest tank force in the civil war yet, and started pushing south. At first it went slow, but then we got a breakthrough and we quickly marched towards Wien and captured München. We then encircled and captured Wien. With that, Bormann surrendered. Now, only Heinrich and the SS remains to destroy, but they will be a tough nut to crack. Luckily for us, they attacked us in the beginning to take land from Burman's former territory. So, their divisions were tired. We counter-attacked them and just broke through. It seems like the nut is rotten from the inside. We captured Strasbourg, Luxembourg and lastly Köln. With Heinrich defeated, the provisional government in Germania joined us and we have finally united Germany again. While we fought the civil war, our faction and most of our Reichskommissariats collapsed. But most importantly, our African colonies are in a war against South Africa, and they are losing because of massive American aid to the other side. If we want to show the strength of Göring's government, we need to turn the tide by aiding our colonies. So we sent two of our elite Fallschirmsjäger divisions. While we have united the Reich, it is nothing but stable. So, Göring initiated a purge to rid ourselves of any traitors. And then he declared martial law to get rid of the anarchy in the streets. In the purge, we caged the Spirian students and cracked down on the bankers who supported Bormann. While all that happened at home, our intervention in Africa turned into a complete disaster. The Americans had managed to capitulate our Reichskommissariat Südwest Afrika. We are forced to propose a South African leaning ceasefire or else everything will collapse. They accepted and at least we got back Angola from them. But after we left, Hans Hüttingen betrayed us and formed a Burgundian system out of our colony. Well, there is nothing we can do about it. Before we can go reclaim it, we need to conquer Europe. So, we continued our purge. We nationalized banks and shot traitors. With stability finally restored, people are beginning to realize how great a Führer Göring is and they are proud of him. So, it's time to bring Germany back from the ruins with our first four-year plan. We began with reforming the financial sector and then reinstated the successful MIFO bills from 1934. Then we began nationalizing the slaves who are owned by the households. This way they would serve our economy instead. After that we began with even more austerity. Only the things necessary to survive will be produced. To finally get rid of our economic crisis we will finally confiscate all valuables from the banks. With our economy back in track, the militarists demanded us to begin War Plan Zero. This is the plan to secure our rightful sphere in Central Europe. First, we annexed and integrated the Netherlands as they were favorable to Göring. We also annexed Denmark and Bohemia. So, it's time. We invaded the Poles. We will rid their nation once again from the earth. We then continued into Bratislava and they surrendered instantly. The final nation to take back in War Plan Zero is our former Reichskommissariat Ostland. The war was as easy as the other wars. With their surrender we have succeeded in our first war plan. The militarists wanted us to immediately continue with war plan A. So that's what we did.
We have reclaimed our Lebensraum, but while we took over everything, our economy has suffered. The constant war damaged and healed our economy. Damaged it because we had to put a lot of money on our military, but healed it as we have been able to constantly raid everyone we invaded. So, if we stop invading people, our economy would totally collapse. Because of that, it's time to initiate War Plan B. First, we have to secure the Russian front. The Russians have slowly began unifying, so we need to crush them before they become too big of a problem. We began terror bombing the Russians and because of this they declared war. So, we pushed to Nizhny Novgorod and Samara. But as we began closing in on Samara, the Russians united in the All-Russian Congress. This meant we were at war with Siberia too. But that didn't stop us. We continued our attack and when we captured Yekaterinburg, the Russian state surrendered. Before we continued into the Commonwealth of Siberia, we defeated the Ural states of Orenburg and Orsk. We then continued into Siberia and also declared war on Kazakhstan. And to quickly continue our conquest, we attacked Turkey. Two quick encirclements, one in the Caucasus and one in Greece, completely destroyed their army. And when we captured Istanbul and Ankara, they surrendered. Our plan to defeat Italy is to first encircle them. To do that, we first have to defeat the Iberians and French. The naval invasion was very difficult and we failed all invasion of ports, but luckily we landed around La Coruna. So, we managed to encircle and capture the port. Then we encircled a lot of their divisions and now their front is mostly empty. So, we captured Madrid, Lisbon, Seville and Barcelona, then they surrendered. To finally conquer all of Iberia, we took over Gibraltar from a Spanish admiral who had taken control over it. But after that, the military wanted us to continue into Africa. So, we invaded Morocco and puppeted Algeria without a conflict. With all of Iberia taken over, we divided it into smaller nations and took control over the Gibraltar region. After that, we continued into France to open a new border with Burgundy and Italy. The French army was in shambles as they had already lost the war against Burgundy. After the fall of France, we continued into Brittany. While we expanded around the Mediterranean Sea, our war in Siberia was slow, but we had managed to reach all the way to Manchuria, and then they surrendered. Now we have taken over all nations in War Plan B except Italy, but they will be the hardest yet. So we have to decide a plan, and our plan will be to rush Italy through the Alps. Why? Because we need this war to be over fast. The Italians have managed to build one nuclear warhead. No room for cowardice, no room for caution, and no room for hunger. Our men will march over the Alps to Rome. Huh? They are threatening us with their one nuke. We aren't scared. We will reach the nuke before it launches.